Welcome to the Black Men Think Podcast. If this is your first time here, know that the views and opinions expressed by the Black Men Think Podcast, are those of the Black Men Think Podcast and not the individual members. With that being said, we're about to be unapologetically, undeniably black. Enjoy. Welcome to Black Men Think Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, JD, aka Last Name Good, and... um we got two other brethren. <laughs> I feel like I ain't seen Mo in a minute, man. Mo been ghost. Mo been ghost. Mo, Mo is here uh, with us this evening. And, and of course, C. Wisby Mac is in the building with us this evening. Fellas, how art thou? <laughs> bro, still living, man. I feel life, it, bro. Life been life, bro. Life been life and talk about it, man. I mean, to wh- whatever you want to share, I'll put it like that, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's just the the usual ongoing situation. We got a whole lot of kids. I got a very stressful job and life go life. Yeah. No, I feel that, brother. Yeah. Now, my um, what's funny is, man, we kind of been stuck in the in the rut lately because we ain't been able to get up off these kids. Mm. Uh, you know, usually my parents, they kind of step in from time to time and, you know, give us a weekend. They'll keep the kids, that type of thing. Well, low key, they got a um, a major pipe issue or something going on at their house. So yeah. they've been having like water coming up from their kitchen sink up under the flooring, and it's Dang. spread through the entire downstairs to the point where like their hardwood looks like it's just like it's almost like rolling hills. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Uh-huh. They got wet spots on the carpet. So, long story short, man, they got a whole situation where. You know, they're pretty much having to take up the entire floor. The slab got to come up. It's a, it's a major. They, they're actually staying in a hotel. Dang. Or, Dang. Oh, uh, yeah. That's messed up, man. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, um, You know, they live kind of far away. I told them they could come here. But, you know, thankfully, insurance is going to cover everything. But, yeah. It's uh, child care is has been oh. caused for the current moment. <laughs> Bro, I, I... <laughs> Listen, man. Listen, Bruh. I I feel your pain, my brother, and, and I think we both we were um was that was that last week we were trying to like get out, <laughs> man. The thing got vetoed, but <laughs> man, no. I mean, so for all of all of our black men, our uh, hold on. I'm sorry. Before we go any further, thank y'all. Make sure this is something that we got to remember to do at the beginning of the episode, y'all. So like, hey, make sure y'all uh, like subscribe hit the bell for notification all of that good stuff um if you're watching on youtube and for our patreon family we thank y'all if y'all do want to join patreon we got something new that we're starting shout out to patreon for doing this they have a free trial so if you want to know what our patreon family is you want to know what it is before spending you can actually come in and do a free trial um three days max now i don't even know we should how, how, how long should we do fellas I don't know what you get y'all those three days, but y'all be <laughs> here downloading all the content. <laughs> I was like, hold on for say three days. Anything. Yeah. Um, but you know, um there's a free trial. So by the time we finish recording this, we'll we'll discuss what that free trial is for y'all. But y'all can come and get a free trial and check out just a taste of the content there. And if you do decide that you want to become a, a thinker, as we call our family. Uh, y'all can join the Patreon. We would greatly appreciate y'all, uh, and it'll help us out tremendously. But all right, now we got the business out of the way. Back to what we were talking about, Mo. I feel you, brother. Um, I don't know, bro. I, I I feel like it's just. I'm gonna tell you what it is. And sorry, Corey. We this is just we got a vent, bro. Sorry, hey, I just good, gotta, we got a vent. I don't know what it is, but it seems like sometimes how like kids can be so off and on. It's like one day they can act like, fam, you ain't even my dad. (laughs) (laughs) And then the next day, they just all up on you, want to talk and have like all the conversations in the world. And I'm like, man, what's going on in this household right now? I feel your pain. I feel it. I don't know, man. It's like we just, me and my wife just looked at each other the other day and we was just like, the reality is what it is. (laughs) <laughs> we have four small kids. Like, yep, there's no yep. way around it. Like, you know, we can sit here and question and try to 
you know, figure out why everything is going crazy. And it's just like, wait a minute. That's why we have yeah. four small children. And that's something that we decided to do. And so, yeah, we're, we're just in it, bro. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I do have a guy's trip coming up, but we got to get our guy's trip set. You know, we, we got to figure that out. But I'm yeah, I'm ahead to, to the shy, man. I'm go to Chicago pretty soon and kick it with the homies. So. You know no, that'll be dope. Get that'll be dope. Take me some me time away and probably go, go see a, a Bulls game or something. You know, just do something. Bro, I, um LA got veto though, man. Mm. I mean, you know, it, it <laughs> is it is what it is. <laughs> it ain't my fault. <laughs> it is your fault, but you should have just said, no, nah, I can't even do it, cuz <laughs> right. <laughs> messed up the Airbnb uh <laughs> oh man, I know, right? <laughs> he said messing up the Airbnb percentage. Boy, hey, that Airbnb percentage it hit different in LA. We can play around you. in other places. LA, boy, you <laughs> right. When your plans fell through, my plans <laughs> fell through, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That is funny. But um, you know, we we wanted to talk about a couple of things, right? So Number one, we all dealing with different things, of course. As black men, we're always dealing with something. But the the latest post that we put up on our IG, and make sure y'all follow our IG, man. We're trying to get those numbers up over there. Um, and also trying to get our YouTube numbers up. Y'all are listening from an audio standpoint. We cool. That's cool. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're just trying to get the visual uh, component boosted a little bit. But we uh, we posted and said, for our Ask a Black Man segment, right? We want to dedicate this episode to the Ask a Black Man segment. So three things you need help with, right? So it's three of us on the podcast tonight. So I figured, hey, each one of us share something that we need help with right now, right? And uh, Mo, we want to start with you, kind of go from there. Yeah, man. Um, Somewhat of a transparent moment you know i'll just i'll just go ahead and be transparent man um at one point in the last few weeks i had this moment or this i'll call it a moment because i think it was a moment it was definitely a kind of a thing that kind of came off of the heels of just some deep conversations some deep um internal assessment and thinking and i realized that I've used different things to cope with the reality of having a stressful life. So, you know, very similar to kind of something I was just sharing, but what I'm trying to learn to do, here's the, well, let me, let me state the problem, right? The problem is, by the way, fellas, I've just started mental health counseling. So I'm very excited about that. I know we've been dope, talking about dope, like, dope, so dope, you know, dope. needing to get into that. Um, so my first time doing it and you know i've had two sessions so far is, is going really well um, that's good bro you know I, i'm i'm very excited about it because you know it's, it's kind of like i've never really had that opportunity to dive deep and to mm -hmm. have someone you know in that type of setting allow me to unload but then also kind of push back on certain things and, and right and you know press buttons here and, and and dive deeper into nuances so so far so good um, one of the things I uncovered in my first conversations was that I'm a lot more, I internalize things way more than I thought I, mm. I don't share, um, which is an epiphany for me because I saw, I've, I've seen, I've seen myself as somebody who doesn't necessarily have a passive aggressiveness, um, isn't afraid of hard conversations, doesn't shy away from conflict. But in talking through things, I'm the exact opposite. I, I actually mm. do. And it was it was like something I never really acknowledged or realized. But apparently, I wear things to the point where they wear me down. And the main way I do that is by not saying exactly how I, how I feel. Mm. I'll say something. I'll have a, re a reaction, but I'm not necessarily sharing my truth. Gotcha. Is it, is it, do you feel it's like a, a protection type thing? So that's, that's where the, the exploration is kind of going right now. You know, it's really, um, 
trying to figure out why. Mm. Like why are there settings? Why are there environments where I don't actually say exactly what's on my mind? You know, and there are probably a lot of different things. Um, one of the things I realize is that I'm wired in a way where I'm a person who, for whatever reason, I've, I tend to put the needs of other people above mine. Yeah. You know, um, it ironically puts me in a position where on one end, I see myself, you know, kind of as a servant leader. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm, whether I'm in a, in a lead role, whether I'm, you know, working with a group of people, um, putting myself out there and sacrificing my interests for the sake of others. On the flip side of that, I'm wearing myself out serving everybody else and not taking care of myself. Yeah. And it happens everywhere. It happens at work, it happens at home. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where it's a, it's a new discovery. Like, dang, I really do that. Like, that's, that's very true. You know? So it's something that I'm trying to become more aware of, um, when the moment happens. And like, now the challenge is not just saying what I feel, but like, even trying to, I put it like this, it's like, there's, there's always this reality where like, I can say something, right. But will it be received? Mm. how am I saying it? Um, is it the right time to say it? So, you know, usually those are the things that's on my mind. So now I'm like, okay, I got to discover how to just say stuff and yeah. be ready for the conflict or the potential for conflict. But at the same time, I've got to learn that comp that middle ground where it's like, I'm not, I'm putting it out there, but I also know how to put it out there, you know? So it's, it's yeah. a new thing. It's a, it's a new space. Man, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like, <sighs> What you saying is touching me because <laughs> I feel like that's my life in a nutshell. And, and I know that I've got better at it, but there's definitely times where I'm just like, it's not even that I don't want to have the tough conversation, but it's, it's really more so part that, but also part not trying to trying to resolve the conflict before there's conflict. When most of the time there's probably no, no conflict. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it's overthinking. I, I believe it's really like an overthinking thing. Um, cause my, and of course being married, you're around somebody that gets to diagnose you, so to speak, you know, if that's the right word, but they, they're able to see you more than, than someone else. And so my wife will definitely catch me in my quiet moments mm -hmm. of not talking about something instead of just saying, like we had, we had a, a, a scenario just looking in the schools for the, for the girls, right. Just mm -hmm. moving forward. We were looking at some charter schools and one thing that came up, like this particular charter school said that the kids all have to wear the same color tennis shoes. Right. And my response to that was like, I mean, I feel it, but that's kind of like controlling as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like it just felt to me, it felt like a very institutionalized type thing to say like, Oh, your kid can only wear black shoes. Yeah, because I'm looking at it like, well, you're trying to control that kid because you're also trying to make everybody look the same, so you can, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over analyzing it, but also I'm, I'm giving my real feelings on that. But it took me, it took my wife saying like, no, say what's on your mind because I'm in my head, I'm thinking like, all right, this ain't really that big of a deal, but this is really how I'm feeling about this subject. Yeah, and it took her kind of like, like no, just like just say it. And when I finally was able to get that out and articulate what was on my mind, the end result was just like, okay, cool. That's how you feel. I get where you're coming from, but also like that ain't what we own. <laughs> it, it ain't that big of a deal type thing. But, you know, I, I think it's, it's challenging, bro. Like for real to, to really, and I, I believe it's because we we're just protectors by nature, like who we are as people. Yeah. And we're trying to protect ourselves and protect the people around us. And, um, yeah. you know, that's a tough, tough position to be in. Core, you, do you vibe at anything we saying, man? Is that, is that a space that you ever find yourself in? Cause some people are just like naturally wired. They're like, I don't care. Like, I feel like if Tori was on here, he'd be like, bro, I just, you know, no, actually Tori actually shared something like that before. Now that I think about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah, I probably internalize a lot of stuff, but I mean, it's different because, you know, I don't have anybody here living with me to like point those things out or, you know, when they notice certain things. But um, I mean, I, yeah, I definitely do internalize a lot of stuff and overthink stuff. I have to catch myself sometimes. Like, you know, it's not even that serious to, you know, kind of dwell on stuff sometimes. But as far as internalizing my feelings, definitely because it's just like, and it's probably being nonchalant about a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, and it's just like, you know, I, you know, it, whatever. Um, and so I can see how that can be a problem. Um, you know, somebody else is here living with me. So I guess my point of view is kind of different. Um, you know, so if you have wives or, you know, someone, you know, living with you um, seven days a week and they can, you know, they can point those things out to you is different from, you know, I'm just seeing people in passing and they may not catch on to it as quick as someone that, that's with me all the time. True. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. I guess, good point. I guess I'm learning. For me, it affects me in a way where I wear more than I acknowledge, you know, mm. like, like I, I started feeling my life get heavy and I I started assuming the heaviness was for things that it really wasn't for. So mm. I'm trying to fix them in certain ways. It's not even really dealing with the issue. And so, like, you know, my therapist was saying, like, the reason why you even feel like you have to cope or, like, find a way to cope is because you're actually not attacking the actual problem, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's when we identified what the real situation was. And I was just like, dang. And then I kind of like took a moment of reflection, um, you know, over the course of a few days. And I realized like, man, it's these things that I have to say to whomever. I haven't said them in years. Mm-hmm. You know, I hadn't said, a, I hadn't said a ton of things, you know, um, for any for a variety of reasons, whether it's right. peace, for just keeping the train rolling, for, you know, making sure everybody else is taken care of. Um, but what that does is it robs me of me. It robs me of my authentic- my authenticity. It robs others of an opportunity to grow because what I have to say in some ways will challenge right, right. Either what's happening, what other people have decisions that they've made, who they are, you know, the whole nine yards. And he was just basically saying like, you're not only robbing yourself of your own peace, but you're also hindering other people from growth opportunities, you know? Yeah. And it it was just, it was, it was an, it was an epiphany, man. So it was something that that's, that's the current issue that I'm, you know, kind of confronting and and dealing with. Um, It was a new discovery. Um, So I'm on that journey now. Can I, your therapy, is it a black man or a white man? Black man. Black man. I got to hit you up because I, I, I definitely, yeah. I've, I've, I've been putting it off because I, I know, you know, that's what I was looking for. And then I kind of yeah. just like, all right, cool. I find it when I find it. I haven't really made it a, a high priority. Um, gotcha. Corey, did you have something that you wanted to talk about? Um, the question was, or I guess the topic was, um, was something so, we struggled something- with? No, no, or, something that, that you need help with now. Oh, I need help with. Um, I think I would say, like, finding my gift. Like, what's my gift mm. in life? I know everyone is born with a gift. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, some might have multiple gifts, I guess. But, yeah, just finding my gift. So that's a question I always ask myself. Like, what's my gift? And then how can I capitalize on that gift? Yeah, no, that's, that's man, that's, that's, a, big that's, um, that's a big question. Um, to, 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 uh, well, I want to ask you something directly along the lines of, of trying to find what your gift is. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say challenge yourself to write down the things that really make you happy, mm-hmm. like really make you happy and, and not talking about just superficial happiness. I mean, like really brings you joy. Right. Yeah. Like if you were sitting around and you were doing this thing, you will have a smile on your face and nobody else is around. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And if that's like two or three things, I think look at those two or three things and really challenge yourself to to see if those are a, a part of or can lead to your gift. Um, because I mean, me just knowing you for all this time that I've been knowing you, though, like I know that things that you are passionate about. I don't know if they like completely bring you happiness, but from the outside looking in, like, dude, you love sports and you love shoes, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's just something that I know about. Well, particularly you, <laughs> you love Jays and you love uh, and you love sports, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's just someone from the outside looking in. And you also love finding deals. I see something there, but that's just me as somebody who always finds something in somewhere. So I don't want to tell you what that is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think you have to really find and and have a real conversation with yourself and see what is that, that you really like really bring you joy, bro. Like, and not think about it from a monetary standpoint, not look at it from anything other than pure joy, where if it, if, if it's happening, you're smiling ear to ear. Right. And, and just try to discover within that, and find something there and it could be something small bro it can i mean it can be something like walking in the park and especially today's time we we miss those things because it's like oh man how i'm gonna how I'm make a, a a living or how i'm gonna live life walking in the park but i'm like bro there are people right now on ig that go and go to every park in america and they're filming it and you know what i'm saying like it's that's an extreme scenario but Mm -hmm. if that's your enjoyment and that's what really brings you joy as a person bro like there god will provide (laughs) he'll provide a lane for you if that's what your real joy and your passions are so i would just say challenge yourself to really write down a list of things that bring you joy and then kind of go from there that that that's just my advice let me ask a follow-up question Corey. what um what specifically do you mean by finding your gift like are you looking for purpose in life yeah purpose are you looking for purpose in work are you looking for like which like what just purpose purpose in life in general in life. Gotcha. like what am i here for like yeah. you know yeah what what a what a what am i to bring to benefit the world mm. gotcha yeah that's what, good um, man. that's that's it that's first of all that's you know i commend you on even like thinking that way or even you know trying to find that because that's that's a a lot of people don't even um, have a, have the courage, I guess, mm. to even like ask that question. Yeah, you know, sometimes we're just living, we're just moving, and sometimes that's a that's a that can be a scary question because you know sometimes people aren't ready to really assess or they're afraid of like what answers they're finding. But I think that's like the first question that leads down a very exciting path. To be honest with you, yeah, um, I would say. You know, I think along with what Jay suggested in terms of writing down, like, you know, what makes you happy, I would say reflect and see if you can pinpoint some some of the moments in your life that you were the happiest, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and what were you doing? Like, what what about those moments made you feel? No, actually, take the word happy away. The moments in your life that you felt the most fulfilled. Mm, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause that's a difference. Like we get happy with, with stuff, but like the moment where you felt like you, you meant something mm-hmm. and just think about like, why, why did I mean something here? What was it about this scenario? Was it, you know, did it have something to do with someone else? Was it about how it made me feel? Um, Cause that's a good place to at least start kind of like feeling out what that is. Um, in terms of your gifts, and I say gifts because you can have more than one, mm-hmm. you know, right. um, you know, it's it's almost as simple, too, as like, what are you naturally drawn to do? Like, mm-hmm. what are you like? What are things that, you know, you do and you do well? Um, things that you do effortlessly, um, things that you do, but also have a passion to do, you know, and, and, it, and it, it gives you a spark when you do it. I think. I mean, are there things that you that you feel like, you know, you kind of that you uh, that that kind of like you feel when you do those things? Is there anything like that? Uh, I have to think about that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 I have to. Yeah. I have to think about that. But uh, no, that's that's a good. Those are some good starting points. Um, Yeah. 
to think about it because I always think about that. Like, I mean, I know I'm here for something. Yeah. Um, just finding out what that is and then, you know, building upon that once I realize, you know, what at least, you know, at least what one of my gifts are. Yeah. I feel that. No, that's that's powerful, bro. Like just to echo Mo, the fact that you can identify that and and really have the courage to express it, because I think that's one of those things that that we as as black men can internalize and keep there. Just like mm-hmm. bro, I don't know my purpose, but you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just just kind of yeah. sweep it up under the rug. So I'm glad you you mentioned that because I know that there are some people that's listening to this, watching, who are probably dealing with the same thing, just really trying to identify their purpose. Um, purpose driven life. That's a yeah, that's a good a book. good book. Um, to to kind of help with that journey. Um, mm-hmm. if you're if you haven't read it or you know, yeah, that's just a good resource tool. Um, I'm looking at a copy of it right now. I'm like, man, I can put that in your hands. Yeah, I know. I got a copy too, bro. If you need it for real, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely got it. Um, for me, man, I think. It's, I really have two things that I really want to work on that I that I struggle with. And really, one of them I struggle with my whole life is just like really getting my weight under control. Like I am a notorious yo-yoer, bro. Like I can lose it and gain it back and lose it. And it's it's crazy because if I look at um I looked at a picture, it was a picture of me and my wife. We were some I we was at a party. And I looked at that picture, I was like, dude, I was so small in that picture. But I remember in my head thinking at that time, I felt so big in that picture. You know what I'm saying? It's just like time has passed. So like I'm going back looking at the picture and like, dang, like I was small in this picture. But during that time in my life, I thought I was big. And, you know, so it was I think for me, that's something that I've I've, I've know I've, I've always struggled with my weight, where it's like I've never been sloppy, but I've never been able to like lose the weight that I wanted to lose and like keep it off for good. And so that's something that I, I just, I know that I need to help on. Um, I've, I've also identified that I am not a gym person. Um, but I know that I, I just, I need to, I really need to force myself to become a gym person, if that makes sense. Um, and also for me, like I don't eat, craziness but i probably just snack more than what i need to snack so just just trying to really identify that and and work on that uh has been like my main thing that i feel like i probably need help with everything else i've kind of sort of figured out what i can do and what i can't do uh the other thing is i I definitely got to get a a a mental health counselor particularly i want to properly do like some grieving counseling Uh, Because while I've definitely speak about my dad, I've spoken to my dad about to to therapists, I haven't had a time to really, I don't know if I want to say, like I've processed it, but you know, I think it's just normal progression. Like I've been dealing with a lot of regret lately where it's just like, dang, I've been thinking like we, well, yeah, you've been here. Like I painted the crib. And so like painting the house, I'm getting memories of my dad, like very vivid memories. I'm just like, dang, the one thing I regret is like, I never got back to fully interviewing my dad. And it was something that was like, I knew I had to do. And I was kind of scared to do now that I really think about it. And so there's some regret. They're like, damn, like I really should have took the time out to have that one-on-one with my dad. Like I really wanted to do and record it so I could have it to go back and, and mm-hmm. reference to, uh, mm-hmm. like I've done with my grandmothers and my, um, my granddad. But, um, yeah, just, just dealing with that and, and shout out to Ace too. He, he, uh, sent me a book that I've been reading. That's, that's, um, pulling some things and, and giving me some understanding of, of some, some things uh, about just life in general, because while I, understand my dad is no longer here i understand that the thing the principles and 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 other things that he's taught me i still you know i i live with those things Mm -hmm. but it's just like bro those moments when something happens where i would normally call my dad and tell him about it that part like eats me sometimes where just like Mm -hmm. damn i can't even call my dad to tell him about 
something like I want to call like pops for y'all painted the house. I remember you was telling me about whoop the whoop, all this. Like I did it and it looks good. It doesn't look, you know, it looks professional just like the way you taught me. Those moments like that where it's just like certain like just got a new MacBook. Want to call him and I really want to call him, ask him about like that. Did you get me logic? Cause I don't know where I got logic from, and I can't, yeah. you know. But it's like, and, and I say that tongue in cheek, but like, that's a real thing. I want to like call, like, dang, I I know if I call him, he'll be able to give me the answer to that. But yeah. I can't call him to get that answer. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 those small things like that. It, it's not a, it's not really a sadness that I feel because I understand that my dad transitioned; he's no longer here. But it's more so of that, just like I just be wanting to talk to him. You know what I mean? Like that's it's just that those simple things, though. So, yeah, yeah, that though that's when it gets the toughest part. So, you know, I, I want to, you know, just properly go through that process with some with a professional because I haven't fully went through that process of of like um a I, what is a grieving grievance counseling? I think that's what. It, yeah, I think it's grief counseling. Grief counseling, yeah, grief yeah. counseling. And you so, know, yeah. so funny. Um, Man, you just, you, like, you just set my mind in so many directions, Jay. Like, I, I'm, I'm more or less, I haven't really faced this reality, but I know it's true, and there's just something that's been looming in my head. But I'm getting really good at not, at not being intentional about seeing the people in my life that I haven't seen in a long time. I'm getting really good at it, and I don't say that in a good way. Yep. Um life is becoming busy enough to keep me from the people that I really care a lot about, you know, and it's becoming comfortable. And, um, I just like, I went through this entire last, you know, winter or not winter, but, uh, this Christmas holiday, this mm -hmm. you know, break that we had with all the intentions in the world to connect with family that I hadn't seen, you know, our family hadn't really got together. Like on my dad's side, really my mom's side either. Like we didn't really had like a, full out family gathering in years you know the pandemic only gave us another excuse and it never used to be like that before it was just like i say about four or five years ago man it was it was steady you know mm. it was uh it was consistent it wasn't as consistent as it used to be because everybody's kind of like had like moved on had their own like they're getting their own kids right. and kind of certain groups might get together that they're on that side of the city and we're on this side and, and somebody else is on another side but like it's been at least two years since I've seen some people, maybe three, you know, and it's honestly, in some ways, it's all of our, you know, all of us have a part to play, but like there've been yeah. opportunities that I just didn't take. And I'm just like, dang, like I'm tripping, yo. Like to hear you be able, like, to hear you say that, that's just real, man. Like, it's not even like, you know, the you know, the truth, you know, the reality, mm -hmm. You know, the morning is maybe maybe not happening right now, but it's just one of those things where it's like the reality is different. Yeah, I can't I can't even call them, and I'm just like, yo, I I need to take advantage of these moments while these people are breathing. You know, I don't call my parents enough, honestly. Bro, man, that man, let me tell you though, like, <laughs> this is this is some real that this is really happening right now that I am learning about myself. And part of it is why I really want to talk to a, to a, a grief counselor. Ever since my dad died, I realized like, damn, I called my dad. Never really called my mom like that. Mm -hmm. And if I did call my mom, my dad was like right there. Like, mm -hmm. and that's something. And so I'm trying to do a better job of calling my mom and like not calling her for something or calling her to, let her talk to the kids. I'm trying to do a better job of just calling my mom and like, Hey mom, what's up? How you doing? Yeah. Same just thing with probably. my, yeah. Same thing with my brother and my sister. Like there are different age groups. So like we do more texting and talking, but I want to do a better job of just like really, because they dealing with the same thing I'm dealing with though. Like they lost a husband, they lost a dad too. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that I communicate with them enough that, um, that I should. I, I mean, really though, like I don't, I'm not a phone person for real. Like I do more talking on this <laughs> than I do on the phone for real. And so I, I, I just want to do a better job of, of co communicating with, with like my loved ones, like you said, but my grandma who called me out on it because I realized like, bro, I haven't talked to my grandma in about a month. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And a lot of it is I don't I don't know, think it's in. No, I'm going to accountability. It's, it was intentional. It was like on some. Every time I talk to you, it made me think about my dad. And you're the being the 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 person that you are. She senses it, and we she goes through it like it's us on some. Yeah, you ain't called me in a while. What's going on? Like, and she's a very she spiritual woman, and yeah. she like she knows it. So she was like, "Yeah, I was going. I was waiting on you to call. Like, I know you ain't. You know, you usually call me at least. You know, every 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 other week. I ain't heard from me in a while. What's going on?" And you know, I, I had one time I tried to call and it went to you know my grandma. Ain't no call waiting. You, <laughs> if she on the phone, you ain't getting her. You know. <laughs> and so, I, I, you know, I called her one time a couple of weeks ago and she didn't pick up. But I was just like, yo, when I talk to her, it always kind of recenters everything. And it's just like, all right, accountability. Call your grandma. Your grandma is like she she's on the other side. She's not gonna be here much longer. Talk to her. And 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 just talk, like really, like you said, bro, talk to family because I know I don't talk to my family like that. I don't. Like, bro, there's something y'all can try to do, man. I try to do it like and it doesn't even matter the length of the time of the call, man. Like if you got a minute, you know, you driving to work in traffic, especially driving to work in traffic. That's the perfect time to call somebody to check. Yeah. Or, you know, even if it's five or ten minutes, at least. You call that person, they hear your voice, and they thought they think that you know, oh, he thought about me to even call mm-hmm. me. Um, and another thing you can try to do, well, I try to do every now and then, like just call if it if it's only one person a day, if you can just yeah. reach one person a day, yeah, and true. you know, just just hit them up. You know, like I say, even if it's just for a few minutes, it's just the fact that you took the time to think about somebody, to call them, not calling them because you want something. But just to call them to check about, you know, whatever whatever the case may be, um, you know, whatever y'all decide to talk about. But, yeah, I mean, that, that's something I try to do too, man, especially people I haven't talked to in a long time. Right. And you might have people you text. I mean, if that's your form of communication, um, then, you know, especially like younger people. But like okay. older, older relatives, you know, I try to hit them up and, you know, talk to them for a few minutes every now and then because i mean you may not get to see everybody especially mm-hmm. if you live you know in a different state so that i mean that's another obstacle but you know life was busy for people and you may not have a chance to see them but at least you called and you know chat with that person because if anything 2020 taught me is life is short man people living out here left and right and still now people living here left and right so yeah um it's always good just to you know just chat with people um even if it's just for a few minutes yeah no that's real bro like the um that's definitely on my on my list to just really be more intentional like when i think about it just go ahead and do it then you know what i mean and and, because you know bro like life life really is busy and even though it's not really busy it is busy Mm -hmm. and and, you know but yeah just try to do it as soon as and you get older you forget stuff that that yeah when I think about a dual number, I had to do that now. It's yeah. like, man, I can't even remember what it was I needed to do. And, <laughs> but I know, you know, I know it's different with y'all because you got kids and stuff. So, you yeah, have other thing, other things that that's on your mind. So, um, I know it's a little different for y'all. Man, we um we got a family vacation coming up, and I'm trying to prepare my mind for it because we're taking a flight with the girls. Mm-hmm. And it's the first time they're been they've been on an airplane. Well, that, uh, that, that hit me. That hit yeah, me. they're Ooh. excited. They're excited, and you know, I'm not worried about. They have Jay. tablets and headphones. You might be all right. Yeah, I'm not worried about Jay, but Noel is the crier, and so. But then you know what? I, I was I was telling somebody about that, and they was like, "What you you worrying about being embarrassed?" Mm. Like they kept it straight. It was like a kid is a kid. That's real. All right. Like. They on the they on the four on the five they gonna cry. Mm-hmm. That's real. They on the airplane and they basically said like forget them folks, bro. Like if their kid crying, they crying and, and it ain't nothing that you gonna do about it. Like this, and, and when they said it, it just made me think like, yo, bro. A lot of the stuff we live in, we're worried about how people see us. That's right. Mm-hmm. On a lot, of, a lot of stuff, and that's the way I took it because, yeah, yeah when a kid cry, we're only worried about how other people on the plane gonna perceive our children crying. Like, but at the end of the day, 
Like who really cares? And, and the same thing with just in 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 business and work. All of this stuff is is more so about how other people are doing it. And when you really strip stuff down to the core, bro, is it's time with family, time, you know, time with God and experiences. That's really all this stuff boils down to. And you think about, man, whenever just with, with my kids, they still remember the vacations that we've been on at this young age. They talk about places that we've been. At this young age, you know, and I think about it, like, dang, those are memories that are going to be stuck with them for the rest of their life. This hustle and bustle that we doing, trying to work and make money and do this and do that. Like, it really don't mean nothing at the end of it, dog. Like, what's really important is spending time with your loved ones and, and, and just really tr- finding some new experiences to, to create some memories with. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's bro, That's so true, man. And it's crazy how much we allow us thinking about what other people feel, think, rob us of those opportunities. Like, yeah. Like, or at least rob our mentality in those opportunities. Right. Like, you know, because really, when you think about it, bro, that's a beautiful experience. You know, I mean, it makes me cringe thinking about putting my kids on the plane. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you got to go y'all, y'all might need y'all on plane, bro. <laughs> need that PJ. Need the PJ the for end, real. I mean, at the end of the day, like you're about to embark on one of the most memorable experiences they'll ever have. Their first time yeah. on the on the plane. Yep. You know, and yeah, like that's that's what the moment should be about. You know, as opposed to like, man, I hope they ain't tripping. Oh man, you know, it's it's so easy to get distracted by stuff that don't really matter at the end of the day. Boom! You said it right there. Like, <laughs> bro, they might take it like champs, man. They might get they on might. there and be, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what, Corey? I, I either way, I'm just gonna my my job is for one, just understanding. And for those that have kids, or for those that don't have kids, I'll give you a gym. When you're doing a family vacation, it is about the kids. It's not about you. Once you have that in your head, everything everything they else will run smooth, bro. Because it's, I mean, now if you can find some time in that in there to make it about you and, and who you're going on vacation with, great. But for the most part, man, it's all about making sure the kids have fun and, and you know, just cre- like Marlon said, they those are going to be memories they're going to remember forever, bro. So just try to give them those moments, and you know, you'll you'll make up for it on your your vacation the next go around. <laughs> right. <laughs> for sure. Well, look. This uh this has been a great episode, fellas. Very transparent episode. Um, thank y'all both for sharing. Y'all taught me. I got homework. I, well, we all got homework, honestly. Right. Um, and, and so for hey, y'all that are, too, Jay, yeah, go, like, ahead, if go this, ahead. If any of our listeners out there, man, I think this man, if y'all y'all heard something that we said and you you've been through it and you've got feedback for us, you know, helping us oh, with yeah. our problems, yeah, yeah, please yeah. by all means, you know, send that to the chat, man. You know, post that on our on our Insta because I mean we. We're seeking, you know what I'm saying? By no means, by no stretch of the words, are we getting on this podcast with all the answers. And and, no. and y'all are our community too, so we would love to hear from you. And if you've got problems and challenges that you need feedback on, that you want to kind of throw into an environment and, and open yourselves up um, in, in a vulnerable place, then we're happy to do that respectfully too. Yeah, no, that's that's good, Mo. That's good. Thank you for um, adding that. Uh, and make sure and y'all... another thing, man, if you don't mind, I'll add, man. No, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Reach out to somebody you haven't talked to in a long time. They cross your mind, hit them up. I'll do that. I mean, yep. you know, just it, if it, if it's only five or ten minutes, you know, you never know what what kind of relationship you can build upon that because you know, um, you never know where it can lead. But yeah, just you know, try to try to call somebody every now and then, reach out to them, or even text if that's your method of communicating with somebody. You know, text them or something. But at least show that person that you crossed their um that they cross your mind so right, right. or you yeah that they cross your mind yeah <laughs> i got you <laughs> <laughs> i was like hold up <laughs> oh man trying to get it out boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but um thank y'all again for tuning in to the black man think podcast make sure y'all like subscribe hit the bell for notification if you're on youtube so you can get this episode and more episodes when they drop um but yeah oh 
Patreon. Go to Patreon. Go now. You can go in and and actually do a free trial, a limited free trial. And if you like what you hear, uh, make sure you subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, it helps us, and we we're hopefully we're helping you by giving you good quality content. So, um, thinkers think. It was do. Don't be nobody else. Just be. There you go, bro. We did it. We almost there. We almost there. We almost there. Hey, we're going to get it, man. By the next time, we're going to practice. We're going to get it, man. It's the Black Man Thing Podcast. The Black Men Think Podcast.